Hello friend, my name is Jason Jones, and among some of the, of the things I do online, I'm an advocate of these things that we call cryptocurrencies. And those are the things that include Bitcoin, that's probably the best known cryptocurrency, and there's a few others, Litecoin, Namecoin, those kinds of things. Now, lately I've taken some jabs from some friends and associates of mine for my advocacy of Bitcoin. And largely, this is due, they make some, what I believe are erroneous claims, like it's a fiat currency, it has no intrinsic value. And then this Mt. Gox thing happened. Now, um, all of this fiasco and controversy around Mt. Gox is, is largely misunderstood. And I even had one guy kind of like smirk and tell me, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin just went bankrupt. What you gonna do now? Okay. Um, if you understand anything about Bitcoin, you know how grossly misinformed that uh, statement is. That's kind of like saying 50 cent pieces went bankrupt. Makes no sense whatsoever. But it does reveal a truth that all of us who advocate for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and the others should acknowledge. And that is many people have heard of Bitcoin, but largely they still base their knowledge of what it is on what what is at best uh, sketchy information in the news. And as far as the news goes, you know, a lot of people are talking about Mt. Gox and saying how horrible it was and how it's the death toll for Bitcoin. Fire will come down from the sky, zombies will come out of the graves, you know, but they don't spend any time explaining what happened at Mt. Gox and why Mt. Gox collapsed. So I think that's a subject that's worthy of a little bit of time. And if you have a few minutes, I would like to share some observations with you. Now, if you're not certain what we mean when we say Mt. Gox, uh, Mt. Gox was something that we call a Bitcoin exchange. And that's a place where you could uh, trade your fiat currency like dollars or euros into bitcoins and vice versa. Now, until its fall, it was the largest of the bitcoin exchanges, but it's certainly not the only one. So, uh, after doing some digging and deciphering uh, some a, a lot of technical talk that I had to go back and watch uh, more than once, you know, I, I can really tell you there's two reasons that this whole Mt. Gox fiasco happened. Reason number one was Mt. Gox handled an issue which is well known in the Bitcoin world as transactional malleability very poorly. And reason two is the management of Mt. Gox tried to hide the fact that they handled transactional malleability very poorly. And uh, I'll, I'll get to more on that here in a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about this transactional malleability. Um, and uh, before I want to go further, I want to give a, a big shout out to Andreas M. Uh, uh, Antonopoulos, and I hope I'm getting your name right uh, for this analogy. If there's anyone who is an expert on Bitcoin, it is uh, that guy. So um, anyway, let's talk about this transactional malle malleability. Okay, let's say you're returning something to the store, a, a pair of shoes, for instance. Now, the store just doesn't take your word for it. You don't bring in a pair of shoes and say, hey, I, I paid $200 for these shoes, give me $200 back. You have to have a receipt to give them to prove that you bought it. Now, what the clerk's going to do, he's going to take your receipt, and then he's going to go to his computer, and he's going to look in, and he's going to check it against their sales records. Now, they do this to make sure that uh, you bought the shoes from the store and that they give you pro proper credit. And they're also uh, making sure that you haven't uh, just a bunch of cheap pair of shoes and you're returning them and you've, you've photoshopped the receipt and, and you're trying to, stand the, to uh, scam the store. Uh, so it's a procedure that protects you, the honest customer, and the shoe store from the cons who try to photoshop receipts and, and all that kind of stuff. It makes sure you get your the your right money back and, uh, and uh, that uh, everybody's happy. Uh, so this receipt is being checked against an authoritative record, in this case the sales record. Now Bitcoin has an authoritative record as well, and this is something we call the blockchain. Now, whenever someone on an exchange like Mt. Gox makes a withdrawal from their Bitcoin account, the exchange's software gives them a transaction ID, just like you would give at the bank or whatever, uh, or think of it as a fingerprint in the form of a mathematical equation. Now, before the transaction is added to the blockchain, that's the official record, remember, it has to go through the Bitcoin network 
and uh, it has to be verified by being solved by different areas of the network. So if the areas of the network all come up with the same answer each time for the equation, the transaction is deemed good, it's added to the blockchain, the official record, and it becomes part of the authoritative record for all time. Let me give you an example. Let's say we're making a withdrawal, and our transaction ID that we're given is the fingerprint of the equation 2 plus 2, which of course equals 4. The transaction is sent to the network for verification. Now if each point in the network comes up with a solution of 4, we have a good transaction and it's going to be added to the blockchain. But, what if some joker along the way changes the equation to 3 plus 1? We still have a solution of 4 and the transaction is still confirmed by the Bitcoin network as legitimate. But the original fingerprint has changed. In other words, uh, the receipt for your shoes that you tried to take back it doesn't match the sales record anymore. And that's what we mean when we say transactional malleability. Now this transactional malleability thing is not new. Bitcoin and the whole Bitcoin world has known about it since about 2011 and all of the exchanges have been warned about transactional malleability and it has a real simple fix. Uh, basically that uh, uh, withdrawals are not concluded until that fingerprint is verified in the blockchain. Now, what Mt. Gox did was completely ignore this warning. They used the original fingerprint to process withdrawals before it was verified by the blockchain or the official record. In other words, when they were vulnerable to this kind of transactional malleability attack, and when these attacks happened, they had no accurate way of telling if funds had been withdrawn or not. Now, no one can steal bitcoins from accounts this way, you know, and they can't add anything to accounts this way. But what they can do is they can cause a lot of confusion in an exchange, and that's what they did with Mt. Gox. Now, then we have problem number two. Mt. Gox tried to blame this on Bitcoin protocol, even though they had been warned about it for the past three years. So Mt. Gox threw a lot of blame in a lot of directions, and what they did not do was acknowledge that there was a problem and move to fix it. Mt. Gox had bad management and bad business practices, and ultimately, that is why Mt. Gox fell and it's out of business. Now, that's not the end of the story, though. So even though they have the bad business practices and they're out of business, they were subject to this transactional malleability attack. Now, oddly enough, a very short time after all of these transactional malleability issues happened, there was a massive DDoS assault on the Mt. Gox website. Now that's where a hijacker will hijack a bunch of computers and then flood a website with a request. And just as it happened, Mt. Gox website could not handle the traffic and it crashed. So all the news and all the markets knows is the world's largest Bitcoin exchange is having transactional malleability issues, and then it just crashes. Nobody knows what happens, and the prices of Bitcoins plummet. Now, remember, the prices recovered very quickly. But think about that. Wouldn't that be a great time for someone to buy Bitcoins? Especially if they were already ready to buy Bitcoins because they were expecting a fall in the price of Bitcoins brought on by, say, oh, the collapse of the largest Bitcoin exchange? So let's make this long story short. There was a weaknesses in Mt. Gox's software. That was Mt. Gox's, the exchange's software, software, not the Bitcoin protocol. Big distinction. Mt. Gox ignored multiple warnings about their weakness. Mt. Gox got attacked. Mt. Gox crashed. The price of Bitcoin fell. The price of Bitcoin recovered quickly. But in the meantime, most likely, Somebody got rich by buying Bitcoins at an ultra-low price. Now, probably all the Bitcoins that were in Mt. Gox are still there, and they'll be recovered by their rightful owners eventually when all of this mess gets sorted out. Uh, in the meantime, the other major exchanges are using best practices to protect themselves and clients from transactional malleability attacks, and Bitcoin is working just as well as it always has. So, I hope... 
I was able to clear up a little bit of the uh, issues about Mt. Gox for you. Thank you for watching. I've included some links below where I did a lot of my research, so in case uh, nothing I'm saying is making sense, maybe you can check there and, and they can explain it a little better for you. And you can also do some of your own research there. Hey, uh, check out the Prosperity with Jason link when you get a chance. And as always, may you have health, wealth, and happiness. We'll see you later.